Today is a very exciting day. I get to work on Liam Doran, the Citroen C4, who won the 2011 X Games gold medal for running across in this car. Super exciting. <laughs> C4s. This has got the engine the wrong way around. It's longitudinally mounted, it's got four wheel drive, uh, four cylinder, big turbocharger. With a restrictor on the front of it, it's producing around 580 horsepower. Without that restrictor, it's capable of nearly 800. With all that power, it brings a lot of heat. But usually, we make our exhaust systems out of stainless steel vents that look like this. On this car, we're going to have to make it out of Inconel. Now, Inconel is a nickel based alloy which, although it looks very similar to stainless, can stand much higher temperatures. First job is to make a downpipe. Now, I've got to get a pipe from down here right to underneath the bottom of the car. And you can see there's not a lot of room to work with down there. At the same time, I've also got to collect the wastegate gases back into the downpipe and send it all down through one pipe down to the bottom. Right, so I'm a little bit red in the face at the minute because so I've got to get the pipe to go from here to here we've got to miss this spinny thing this bar this bar this bar this bar the top of this this bar this spins quite fast when it's moving this bar this bar and come out here somewhere as you can imagine it's quite the task So we finished the exhaust system on the Citroen C4 Rallycross car. Um, we'll start from the beginning. We've got the downpipe up here. It's a three and a half inch downpipe that comes all the way through. Um, starts off a little bit smaller than three and a half inch, and we've combed that out straight away from the back of the turbo to get the gas out as quick as humanly possible. We've got the wastegate plumbed back into the downpipe. Uh, there's a small flexi on the start of that. Uh, where, where the wastegate comes out into, back into the downpipe is to allow for heat expansion and any engine vibrations they're going to get. Uh, after that we come straight down into the section where the sensors are, so we've got a lambda sensor and a temperature sensor and they're, they're just about far enough away from the turbo as to not heat up too much and cook them but close enough so that they can read what they need to be reading under there. We've got the next section of the downpipe, so it's a two-piece downpipe. Um, it's done in such a way so that, that you can get the gearbox out very quickly. Obviously, if they have a problem on the track, then you're going to need to get that gearbox out quickly. Um, whilst we've done that, we've allowed for these bits to be removed as quickly as humanly possible. So we've used spring clips and hooks um, with quite a long extension on them so you can get a finger around that bit shouldn't be hot so when they're trying to change the gearbox and this exhaust is still very hot they can still do that. Moving on to the next tight section here um, again we've got another spring clip so you can get this section out with the gearbox. So next bit is we have the mid section of the exhaust um, this also needs to be quickly removable in order to change the gearbox or work on the gearbox if needs be. Um, there's a very tight gap for this to come through it almost touches all the way around around here and that is the only space due to this very large transmission that we can actually send the pipe um, all the subframe has been shaped to allow us to run a pipe straight through there so that is literally the only place it can possibly be um, again we've got a quick release system spring system on here um, so that we can get the exhaust off quickly and when it's hot the midsection of the exhaust bolts to the start of the rear section which goes over the subframe via a V-band here. Um, this is so you can release this part of the exhaust without having to move it too much. This allows you to twist this down and get that section out if you need to to, change, to work on the transmission. Uh, working back from there, we've got a small bracket that mounts onto the underneath of the car. This whole exhaust system is solid mounted. There's absolutely no rubber bushes in this at all whatsoever. As you can imagine in a rallycross car, you're not really too worried about vibrations from the exhaust. There's a lot more vibrations going on than that. 
We've tucked it quite up, quite close up to the prop shaft under here. This is to give as much ground clearance as humanly possible. Going on from that, we curve round up and up through the subframe. There's quite a few bars to kind of twist, twist around and get through here. Um, we sent this as high up as possible and as close to the floor pan as possible. Um, this is to give the CV joint as much room as humanly possible for the uh, heat. Obviously the exhaust is going to be quite hot and there still needs to be a rubber boot on that CV joint so we don't want it to be cooking that every single time. So moving on to the rear section of the exhaust system, uh, we'll come back down from going over the, the dip and the CV joint, uh, we'll come back down to this section here. We've got two very strong brackets here and here, this is to support the back end of the system. We put the catalytic converter as the tailpipe on this system. Um, the reason we have a catalytic converter in there at all is that the regulations for the series say that you have to have one. Uh, now, the further away from heat the catalytic converter is, the more gas it flows. So if we put it at the coldest part of the system, which is right at the end, uh, it will flow more gas, which then means more power. Some of the more eagle-eyed viewers will have noticed that there is no silencer in this exhaust system. Um, that is because the exhaust the silencer is going to go in this section here. Um, we didn't quite have the specs in time to make the silencer um, for this car. Obviously, building a car like this, there's many time restraints that's got to be out for uh, just before the season starts. Um, so we're going to actually make the silencer and send it off after we after the car is gone. Um, this section here is where the silencer is going to go. Um, obviously we can make fairly easily, we can just make a straight silencer that will fit in there. Um, there's another reason for having the bracketing each side on the pipe work. Um, it's so that you can remove the silencer without having to undo any bracketing. This allows for easy change of the diff or to be able to work on the diff should you need to during an event.